Hello, I'm recording this in the morning of August 23rd Pacific time. I'm letting you know that because of some of the kind of current astrological energy pieces which may be useful to you. So we are in another of these liminal phases and you may have been feeling this and I wanted to bring you a little bit of um, intel, imagery, something to, to be helpful. So you may have already felt what I'm going to describe to you, or you may be feeling it right now, or you may be about to feel it, or you may not feel it at all. But um, let's see. So what I'm describing is a kind of voidal time period uh, as you're sort of in that liminal stepping from one to another phase, if you will, or have like a big, large collective phase shift um, or, or uh, uh, phase state change happening at a much larger scale. And so each of us individually are going to have our own little, like, go through that passage, if you will. Um, And so it feels very much sort of like a stepping from one phase to another and has that kind of liminal crossing the doorway. Um, It doesn't feel to me that it needs to be super abrupt and dramatic, but uh, some of us may uh, sort of get caught in a little bit of like uh, the imagery I'm getting is sort of like a web uh, in the doorway, right? So it's like you're trying to walk through the doorway, but then you kind of get stuck in this little web. And um, if that's where you are, this is uh, what that what this transmission is about. So the characteristic of this feeling right now, uh, and I do feel that the the state of this feeling is uh, being influenced, if you will, by um, by kind of artificial or outside of you kinds of uh, impacts, right? So it could be, you know, uh, small sort of micro steps of not quite uh, keeping up to your own standards of, of how you stand for yourself. And so maybe you've been, you know, watching some TV shows or stuff on social media or the news that you in more recent times wouldn't normally be watching, but it's kind of, you've kind of got accidentally tripped and fell into, you know, sort of a little bit of a dark pocket on media in some way. Um, and, you know, so you may not be connecting that to this, but I want you to connect it for you to tell you that that's true. Or maybe you've been kind of overindulging in nostalgic music that is not feel good music for you, but that is kind of like, you know, digging around in the in the wounds of the past in a way that is not helpful, but hard to resist. Once you get started like that kind of you know, poking in on the on the little scabbed over but not quite yet healed, um, you know, wound uh, on your arm and you're like can't stop poking at it. And then next thing you know, it's bleeding again. Right. Um, sorry for the visceral image if that grosses you out, but it's kind of like that. Um, and so then from that place, you sort of st- you kind of get stuck in this weird nothing place, perhaps. This happened to me, so I'm describing it from my own experience and then my own received information uh, as I came out of it. So kind of in this sort of nothing voidal place, initially just sort of felt disconnected a bit, felt maybe a little bit tired, felt maybe a little bit like, well, that's okay. It's just X, Y, Z day. It's just A, B, C conditions. You know, I'll do this and then later things will, you know, kick back into gear again or tomorrow will be it'll kick back into gear again. And then instead, uh, what occurred was sort of a feeling of briefly feeling disconnected from purpose. And even though in my mind I still understood my purpose, I felt unplugged from it briefly. And uh, and it has been a very long time since I've had a feeling like that. And uh, I feel for me personally, in some ways, the there was a purpose in this, which was to remind me how fucking shitty it feels to feel that way, because I know that uh, that many of you are going through phases of, wait, what's my purpose? I can't connect to my purpose. And this is actually something that in my private work with, with gifted women, I help them with. And so just sort of reminding me like how shitty that feels. Um, there's a I feel that, you know, for all of us, there's a kind of existential dread or despair that can come from not being connected to meaning or to purpose. Uh, and for the gifted brain, um, that's even greater, that it gets that experience is even more exacerbated, if you will. So in this kind of aimlessness, disconnecting from purpose feeling, 
um, some imagery may come in for you when maybe through a dream, maybe through just sort of like it pops into your head. I, I don't uh, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I think there are many ways this could occur, but of a sense of mm, that there's a requirement on you to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. And this is really the, the, the nugget, the seed, the pinpoint of this little trap in the, uh, in the threshold in the doorway is this idea of rehooking yourself into a very old, incorrect, old world narrative that you are required to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. You are not required or even asked to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. And even if you tried to sacrifice yourself for the greater good, it would not work. It would fail. You would not help. And you would have sacrificed yourself. I'm speaking very starkly about this because I want that part of you to hear me that goes, oh, oh, fuck, I know that. I I knew that. I forgot. I want you to feel it viscerally. As I'm talking to you now, you are not only not required, but you are not asked and it is not desired for you to attempt to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. This will backfire. This will not help. It may hurt and it will most certainly hurt you. This is we are in new world energies and it is a completely different way of contributing to the greater good. And of course you want to contribute to the greater good. That's why you're here. We all want to contribute to the greater good. It's, it's the core thing calling us into this time and why we chose to be in these bodies at this time. You need to learn how to do it in a way that is supporting, nurturing, replenishing, regenerating of yourself. At least as much, if not more, of those that you're helping. Which is a huge paradigm shift, right? It's a really big paradigm shift. It's okay if you don't know how to do that in this moment. What's most useful is to simply commit to the vision of it. Yes, I will commit to the big picture vision of figuring out how to contribute in a way that is regenerative in nature that refuels, that nourishes, that fills me up and expands me at least as much as it is refilling, nourishing, supporting, expanding those that I'm helping with whatever I'm doing. And remember that your light is one of your most powerful ways of helping, especially during these uh, kind of these earlier times in the big shifts into the new world energies. Right now, of course, we're here in bodies because we are here to have the embodied experience and the embodied expression of our cosmic selves. So we want to bring represent representations of that light into form, into the physical material world. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely wonderful. Just to know that it's a both and. Okay, and know that the physical form may come later, maybe later today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next year. But as much as you I encourage you to commit to digging in and finding what that's going to look like and getting started with it, understand that the light comes first, the energetics come first and stay committed there. When you are in times of doubt, when you're in moments of, ah, I don't know what to do when I'm flailing, you know, what lights you up? What fills you up? What brings you joy? Reconnect to that. Fight back to it if you have to. If you got sucked into one of these little voidal spots where you then got sort of sucked into a disconnection from your purpose, from your sense of your cosmic self here, from what you're supposed to be doing, and you felt that kind of existential despair, that floating, disconnected, uh, you know, not not even that, like that there's more feeling in what I just did than what that, that kind of non-feeling void gray space, right? Fight your way back. It is a kind of a gray 
lightless place. It's not dark. It's not light. It's like a nothing space. And do anything in your power to get your light shining back again so that like that little lightning bug, that little lightning bug at, at dusk suddenly gleams in the darkness of the twilight. Like that needs to be you for yourself inside there. Get that little light going again, right? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, okay? Get music. Get a song. Get in touch with somebody that you know uh, gets this stuff and lights you up and just say, remind me who I am. Look in the mirror and say these words. Oh, noble one, you have forgotten who you are. Come, let us remember. Walk out into the woods. Walk out by the waters. Walk out into the meadows. If you are in an urban environment, find a park, find a tiny patch of grass, anything. Touch nature with your physical body, with your skin, in some way. You have a plant in your house? Go hang out with it. Put your hands in its soil. Talk to it. Thank it for being there and making your air cleaner. I can't overestimate the power of music to support us during these times. It just doesn't ever fail. Put on an uplifting song, a song that speaks to your heart. Sing a love song to yourself. Right? Sing, dance, move around, even if you don't want to, even if you're feeling completely downtrodden and as if you're covered in the weight of a thousand weighted blankets like those big giant weighted lead blankets they put on you if you're going to have an x-ray right do it get up okay there are many other kind of biological supports that you can be doing at this time that i've spoken about many other times but i want to really emphasize two right now one is l-theanine l-t-h-e-a-n-i-n-e L-theanine. I feel very strongly that pretty much every human on the planet right now with the energies and what's going on with them and how that's kind of impacting our neurobiology should be taking L-theanine as a maintenance supplement to support the integration of these energies. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you what to do in that sense. You make your own decisions and be wise about all of that good stuff, whatever you need, right? There's your disclaimer, okay? But I'm taking 800 milligrams of this a day. I have not been taking this uh you know ongoing forever it's something that i took a long time ago and have been has been brought back into my attention in the last few months and has been very supportive for many people that i know around these higher integrations of these kind of high multidimensional energies into the physical 3d body now uh kind of on the sort of mundane muggles world althenine is also very helpful um, and more commonly known for supporting things like improved focus and anxiety and uh supporting sleep etc and i regularly recommend it um uh in those kinds of contexts as well but today i'm talking about a purely esoteric use of it in support of the biological in, in support of the biology the other one is vitamin D, D3. And I've talked about this many times, and I'll just keep talking about it forever. Um, please, please, please be both accessing sunlight because there is a mechanism in the body. There are two mechanisms when you're accessing the sunlight. Yes, you're impacting the D level of D in your body, but you're also kind of impacting, if you will, the capacity of the body to sort of generate certain related things uh, as a result. So get yourself out a little bit into sunlight every day as much as you can, okay? If you have darker skin, know that you need to be in the sunlight longer to get the same amount of kind of effect. This is just the reality of the physical um, mechanisms of d more darkly pigmented skin, okay? So that D3 supplementation, um, you know, take at levels that feel correct to you, use your intuition, and I do always recommend that people take K2 with that D3 in order to support the the D3 essentially that you're supplementing with to lay down into the bones, so to speak, and not be as much of an impact on the organs. OK, um, you just need the one K2 with whatever level of D3 you're taking. It's not necessary to pair them uh, equal to each other at all. Uh, and with the K2, get a, a MK4 and an MK7 version of that. When you look that stuff up, you'll see what I mean. Okay, 
So, and vitamin C. All right, make sure everybody, I'm assuming everybody who's listening to this is taking vitamin C regularly, but just in case you've fallen off or forgotten about it, there's your reminder. All right, so standing for yourself. We know how important this is. We've talked about it so many times. We know this is really the whole kind of game is how will I stand for myself and the standing for yourself like we think of it sometimes and sometimes it is it's like the big grand gesture but oftentimes it's the micro moments it's those micro moments of in this moment right now will I stand or collapse for myself for my cosmic self for the integration for my expansion for the quality of life experience that I want for just for my heart for my sweet tender pure heart for my nature for that sweet soft spot inside me will I stand for that so that it can stay sweet and soft and tender so that it can grow and get bigger this isn't always about warrior energy although it can sound like that when I talk about it as standing right it's this is not always about that it's just where's that devotion where's that commitment And when we come through these odd spaces, like this kind of current or recent sort of voidal phase that was then marked by this little trap that some of us may have gotten sucked into, where we uh, briefly accidentally got unplugged, if you will, from our sense of purpose uh, and our sense of role in the larger scheme of things, um, there can be a usefulness in a little bit of a fight energy. Like, yeah, okay, I'm fighting back. I'm fighting back. I'm fighting myself back into the, you know, I'm getting back up and getting back into the ring, so to speak, of myself. Um, So just to stay committed to yourself. Stay committed to yourself. Know that every moment is another chance for that, right? And know that you don't have to hold it permanently. Like there's no, like if you're, when you go into these existential despair phases, right, which we can all go into, but this one has a artificial or enhanced feeling to it, not entirely just sort of a natural ebb and flow. Um, When you have that experience, um, it's, it's, you know, it can be normal to feel like you just want to give up, right? And so, and it can be normal to feel like, even if you don't want to give up, it can just feel exhausting. Like the whole thing is just too exhausting on an existential level. My soul is tired. You may even have feelings of like, my soul is so tired. I'm done. I want out. I don't like this anymore. And you may be feeling that on an existential level. Now, I'm not saying that you're feeling suicidal. I'm not talking about that. I hope that that's not the case. If that is the case, I hope that you'll reach out immediately for help. If you have nobody to reach out to for help, uh, there is a suicide hotline uh, number. There are many, many ways to reach out for help. I don't feel, as I'm saying this, that anybody who's listening to this or will be listening to this has that particular issue in the physical. But I do feel that many of us in this mm, augmented or enhanced uh, little in-between moment are feeling a kind of like, what if I just sort of checked out? And there's a lot of ways to check out, right, without being suicidal in the human sense of the word. Um, There's a lot of ways to just be like, I give up, you know, forget it. I'm just going to lay down, you know, I'll just get some kind of disease and die. You know, that's fine. That's no problem. I'll have a heart attack. You know, I'll have a stroke. I'll I'll get cancer. I'll fall off a cliff. You know, whatever. Um, Because you're more connected to your cosmic self than you ever have been before, you actually have more authority over this than you're used to. So I want you to lean into the opportunity of that as well as briefly leaning into the slight terror of it as well, right? Like there's a little feeling as you become aware of, oh, wait a minute. Oh, whoa, whoa. I have that level of authority? Yeah, you do. There's a little bit of a feeling like um The other day I was driving in the mountains way up in the passes and the roads are very windy and there are these huge kind of cliff faces or rock faces or mountain faces. Right. And, you know, it's like it's amazing. You look out and you can see this incredible vista. It's just stunning. If you pull over to some of the little you know, scenic spots, you can kind of come up close to the edge. And if you look down, 
that's like a whole other experience than the looking out, right? And it can give your body that momentary like, ah, you know, total lizard brain panic moment. And also this weird kind of compulsion to just jump, right? Which I know people have talked about that many times. So uh, this awareness can give you that feeling. Keep moving through it. Remember that you are in a spiral that is going up. And at every new level of the spiral, you're going to visit some of the same things again from a new place. And some of these can be old things that you're letting go of that you're visiting again and again. But as you move past kind of that mm, part of the process, right, If you, as you move past sort of the worst of the shedding of the density and the trauma and the blah, blah, blah from the past, whether it's other lives or this one, you are moving up in skillfulness, in craft, in, in artistry of the beginning of your cosmic multidimensional expression and experience within your physical three-dimensional body as a human. It is the beginning of the evil leap into homo lumens. And that process is you're building muscles. You're building a skill set. You're building a craft. It's an art. It's a, it's an artistry for sure. And so you're going to keep revisiting how to do certain things better and better as you go up. And you may accidentally think you're looping. Oh, why am I doing that again? Didn't I already learn that? Yeah, no, now I'm learning it in a new way. Oh, now I'm learning at a new level of nuance. Oh, okay. You know, if you've ever done any kind of, you know, sport or dance or yoga or, you know, any kind of physical movement, there's almost, you know, nobody's perfect at any of it. You can always get better. Oh, yeah, that feels good. I did that one better. I've never done one as good as that, whatever the thing is. This is just like that. It's exactly like that. So you're just going to keep on going up, going up, getting better, getting better. And, of course, also those spiral loops will get smaller the higher up you go because you're dropping more density, dropping more density in many different ways of thinking about that. And so you can move around the spiral more quickly. Okay. All right, so I feel this is the primary message that wants to come through today. I'm actually standing in the woods as I'm talking to you. I was guided to come out to the woods today to bring you this transmission, which is not something that I do very often. Um, I don't know why, it just isn't. And um, probably because of noise, sort of thoughts about noise. I'm not way, way out in the woods. I'm in a uh, you know, 22 acre reserve, uh, near my house. Um, I'm in the watershed of the lake. And, um, and so sometimes there's people here and, you know, whatnot. But it was interesting, just a funny story. Um, very aware of there's just been interference, um, in a couple of different ways, uh, during the night and this morning for me that I have moved aside, uh, and moved what I want to say above from, but even now, as I was kind of coming out into the woods, there were all these interesting little things like out of the blue, suddenly there was this huge construction noise over to the right that was just like going to be completely killing of any of this. Then there was this whole other crazy scene going on with somebody with their dog and another dog. And there was like a big dog fight going on. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And I just kept walking into the woods and I just kept saying, Nope, we are, we are protected. We are in the golden lights. The golden dragons are here. They are the queen's guard. They will protect all of us. They will allow this transmission. And I feel like I'm up on top of this little area where I'm kind of up high and I'm looking down and looking out over all these woods. And there's more to go. More height to get. But this is a pretty darn good view. And I see you. I see your light in the world. And even if you allowed it to be dimmed for a moment, nothing can put it out but you. And you can always bring it back. Okay? I love you. And I thank you for your light in the world. And these next few days could get a little wild and woolly. Just surf it. Just roll with it. Okay? I think it's going to be very beautiful as well. Very high energy is very beautiful. Um, but there may be 
kind of wild moments, you know. Um, we may have moments of getting kind of crashed up by the surf against the rocks of the beach, but you're not going to get, you're not going to get too thrashed by it. Okay. It's going to be fine. You'll be surprised at how incredibly resilient you are when you get thrashed up on the beach by a rock, by a wave. You'll just be like, Oh, cool. I'm ready. Let's go again. You know, and, and use that also, right? Grab those wins, those experiences of, Oh, I, I didn't know that I could do that now. You have many new things available to you. As you come through this new portal, this new doorway. So start looking out for them. Okay. Be on the lookout for the wild and the mysterious and the magical and keep on rewilding yourself. How much more feral can you get? Because I'm betting it's a lot. Okay. I'm all about the rewilding these days and I hope that you are too. <sighs> all these beautiful trees in the Pacific Northwest, they send their love to you. They send the wisdom of their connected networks to us all. The moss, which just always makes me giddy, says hello. And the ferns, ancient beings, say hello. The beautiful sky. That beautiful blue, that new, new earth blue that's the sky nowadays with that sort of violet purple tone. So stunning, just stunning. Okay, the green and the blue is here for you, wrapping itself around you. Love you. <laughs>